Advanced glycation end products, or ages, are extremely bad for our health. Slowly but surely, year after year, we are accumulating ages in our bodies that will eventually, irreversibly, lead to disease. Wise athletes everywhere need to become age aware. Today on episode 112, Glenn and I talk with doctors David Turner and Victoria Findlay of the Anti-Age Foundation about their mission to make all of us age aware so we can make informed decisions about what we eat and how we prepare our meals to benefit our health. Ages are a mystery. The mystery is why almost no one knows about ages. People who have heard of ages usually think ages is only a problem for people with high blood sugar, but that is wrong. Ages are accumulating in everybody's body all the time, in your body right now. And your personal rate of accumulation is a key driver of your rate of aging. What's more, ages are a known cause of cancer and of many chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, painful joints, erectile dysfunction, and even wrinkling of the skin. And regardless of any efforts you are making to extend your health span and lifespan, if you do not address ages, it is like driving to the gym with the parking brake still on. Our bodies make ages as an unavoidable consequence of turning the food we eat into the energy we need to live. In addition, almost all the foods we eat contain ages preformed. The volume of ages in each food is dependent upon the type of food and how it is prepared. Avoiding the ages in our food is the easiest way to control the accumulation of ages. Cooking food slowly with low temperature while keeping the food wet, using acidic marinades and or certain spices makes all the difference. Eating food raw is even better, and regular exercise may be the only way to reduce the daily and permanent retention of ages. The Anti-Age Foundation says up to 30% of the ages we consume in our food retains inside our bodies. So, very slowly, over our lifetime, those ages build up in our organs and our joints and skin. The Foundation says, based on studies of healthy individuals, consumption of 15,000 to 20,000 ages per day may be a healthy limit, as the body can detoxify some amount of ages. But less is always better than more when it comes to ages. Bear in mind that while 15,000 ages may sound like a lot, a single fast food meal contains 22,000 ages. Fried, grilled, baked foods, and in particular fatty meats generate the most ages. You don't have to give up all happiness in life. Just cut back on ages where you can if you want to be a healthy and strong athlete throughout your long life. All right, let's talk to Drs. Turner and Finley about ages and how we can slow down our rate of aging. Doctors David Turner and Victoria Findlay, welcome to the Wise Athletes Podcast. Well, we're glad to be here and thank you for the invitation. Nice to be here. Thank you. We're excited to hear what you have to say today. Yeah, it should be fun. It will be. We got a big crowd here. Uh, this is great. And um, gosh, I have been uh, waiting for a long time on this one. But let me first say, today's topic is actually got a lot of possible names. And so I'm going to list them all out here. And so just so that the audience will be clear about what we're going to talk about, it's either advanced glycation end products or glycation or AGES, which is the acronym for, you know, AGEs. Are there any other terms that this uh, topic goes by? No, I mean, they're, they're called glycotoxins as well as one of the things, but that's not right. I mean, the true term is advanced glycation end products, but to be promised, only a scientist could think of a name up like that. I mean, it's a terrible name. And it's hard to say when you're on podcasts. So we use um, ages is the sort of short term we use for it that um, is a bit more useful when it comes to talking about these things. Yeah. Okay. You will find that I, I do have scheduled in my notes here a complaint about the name. But let's <laughs> let's get to that when we can. Before, I'm, I am going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves and your nonprofit. But before we do that, I, I wanted to say that I have done more preparation for this than any episode of the podcast uh, that I have ever done on Wise Athletes. Mm -hmm. Partly it was because I came to the topic in kind of a weird, unlikely roundabout way that made me feel like I was onto something really important. Yet I just couldn't get to the bottom of the mystery of why it wasn't something I had heard much about before. Yeah. And I kept worrying that it was just me being dense um, you know, or what was it that I was missing? Anyway, hopefully we're going to get to the bottom of that here today because 
in the work that I have done to get ready for today, I think this is a big deal. Yeah. Can you guys uh, tell our audience here a bit about your background and uh, tell us about your organization and uh, how did you come to know so much about ages? Go on, Vic. Okay, so my name is Victoria Finley. Go by Vic. I am an associate professor of surgery at Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, also lead the cancer prevention and control program for Massey Comprehensive Cancer Center at VCU. Um, my background is molecular biology, cancer biology by training. I'm a scientist by birth. It's all I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> completely different from Dave, who is also my husband. So just ah. the interest of full disclosure. Um, and together we co-founded, we're two of the co-founders of the anti AGE Foundation, because we mm. believe in global education for health, because the one question that we get more often than any other when we talk to people about AGEs is, why have I never heard of these? And so we're <laughs> hoping to change that for the, for the, for the better. Well, good. I, I want to help you do that. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Vic had to mention that she's been a scientist since she's been born because I didn't do science till I was 30. And I've probably done every job you could probably think of at some point. <laughs> so we think about these things in very different ways. So I'm also um, in the Department of Surgery at Virginia Commonwealth University. I'm the vice chair of research there. And um, to could I was in the same position as you are 10 years ago, maybe 15 now that I had never heard of advanced glycation hen products. And I read one paper on these things and I changed my whole research program towards mm -hmm. looking at these things. And we spent the last 15 years really trying to get these things established within the scientific community as much as anything else. And we're pleased to say we've been quite successful for that. Excellent. And um, it's really pushed us forward with that. And like I said, we started the Age Foundation because we need everybody to be age aware which is just not the way it is. Hardly anybody's heard of these things. And uh, I really appreciate the invitation to be on today and your interest in this area because that can only help. Yeah, well, I hope it does. Um, uh, and for sure, it has already helped me uh, and I hope to learn even more here today. Uh, well, so let's get into this terrible name thing. I, <laughs> I actually think that the name means something important, even though we're not going to refer to the whole advanced yeah. glycation in products thing. Let's just understand what it is. Cause you know, yeah. obviously a scientist or maybe an engineer sure. came up with it to mean something specific to distinguish it from other, other things, which it is not. Yeah. Advanced means what? I don't think it means highly trained. So basically <laughs> these ages are the result of a, a reaction. That's probably a worse name than ages called non-enzymatic glycoxidation. And that's a complicated reaction that comes from oxidative stress and inflammation and metabolism. And uh, when that happens, the end product of that reaction is an advanced glycation end product. So that's where the end product comes from. And like I said, only a scientist could think of it that way. And um, But I have to say, the last decade, I've been trying to think of a better name for these things, and I haven't come up with one yet. And it's sort of difficult to give a name that actually describes them accurately. And advanced okay. glycation end product. Glycation is the reaction or one of the reactions that leads to the formation of ages. And it is the final irreversible. And that irreversible bit is important product. So it's irreversible because you can't, and there's no chemical reaction that can go backwards and remove ages and sort of neutralize them. And that's what's made them very important. All right. And I, I hate to be a pest on this, but on. I think that it's worth a little bit more. The sense, I mean, the sense that I got when I first heard about it, based on the way people described it, it's like, oh yeah, you got some sugar <laughs> soaking in some protein and poof, you got ages. So it turns out it's, it's more complicated than that. Definitely. You know, everything is, yep. you know, and for people like me, scientists try to come up with simple ways of not blowing our minds uh, for us to understand things. Mm -hmm. and uh, But sometimes the, it, the description is too simple and then it's not understandable. It's too far from what's really happening. So let, but let's just talk about the advanced, I think, is referring to the fact that there's like a series of steps that occur and this is toward the end. This is far along in the pa the path, the chain of chemical reactions. Yeah. I mean, that's a good way of describing it, but uh, that last bit, it is the last step in the reaction. Well, isn't that what the end product means? Yeah, that's where the end product comes from because it is the last product that's produced 
by this chain of reactions that happens in the body. Right, right. And by end, I think what we're saying is it's permanent. Yeah. It's not reversible. Yeah. So this is what it is now. Yeah. The glycation, I think, refers to glucose. Yeah, it's actually more than that. I mean, glycation um, is the complicated reaction that leads to it. And most people and everybody talks about sugar and how that leads to the, these, the formation of these ages. Yeah. It's actually, it, the best way to talk about this, ages are formed in the body naturally. Yeah. And that happens due to increases in oxidative stress and increases in um, sort of metabolic byproducts. So when we break down energy to produce yeah. the when we break down the food, the foods and everything in the body to produce energy, it sort of produces these metabolites. These metabolites feed glycation. So it's not just sugar like everybody talks about. This is actually a result of metabolic dysfunction, oxidative stress, inflammation, and glucose and the sugar. All of them can feed this reaction that called glycation that leads to the end product formation. Okay, good. Now, this business of sugars attaching to proteins, Yeah. this sounds, oh, this is scary stuff, but oh, and in reality, this is just everyday things. There's, uh, there's a, a whole other process called glycosylation, yeah. which is sort of a regulated mm -hmm. process that's actually very important for the functioning of the body. Yeah. And so the, these glycated proteins, they have a different name in order to distinguish them from their regulated cousins. These are the unruly, <laughs> unregulated things, which because they're permanent and yeah. these things getting attached to proteins that are have a certain shape for a certain function, and now they don't function the way that they were supposed to, this can uh, create problems. And we'll, and we'll talk about that more in just a second here. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about where they come from. I, I mean, I've heard that you just said that they're made in the body. Oh, well, why would our body make things that are bad for us? Well, I mean, our body makes reactive oxygen species too. And, you know, when we're exercising and so our bodies, you know, our bodies are working against entropy all the time. And so, you know, the, we're having to burn fuels and, and make byproducts and we got to clean stuff up and our bodies are really great at that. The problem is when our defenses get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and then we can't Mm -hmm. So if we have too many oxidants and not enough antioxidants, well, now we're starting to have some problems with that. If we have too many ages and not enough anti-ages, yeah. then we're going to start having some problems. So we've talked about the ages coming from inside the body, but they also come from outside of the body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's totally true. I mean, the ages in the body, we know that the defense mechanisms within the body are actually pretty um, poor. So it's, all, it's been shown that ages accumulate in the body over time. That can't be stopped. It happens. And yeah. it actually, what they do is they grab onto not just proteins. They can grab onto fats. They can grab onto our DNA, all of these things. And there is repair processes that can remove them, but they're very sort of inefficient. And like mm -hmm. I said, ages are known to accumulate in tissues and organs over time. They um, sort of correlate with chronological age. So a 50-year-old person has a lot more ages in their organs than a 20-year-old person. But, um, and these things lead to the deterioration of tissues and organs because of the damage that they can do when they, uh, when they sort of attach. The other side of that now is mainly because of the way we live our modern lives, we are now exposing our bodies to so many more of these ages than ever before, like uh, uh, the lack of exercise, the diets that we eat, even sun exposure. I mean, sunlight causes ages to form in the skin. So uh, all of these things, pollution, pesticides, can increase the formation of ages in the body. So there's a lot of different things that we're mm. sort of, we call it exogenous exposure, exposure from the outside, that's now contributing to more of these ages in the body. That's sort of leading to the damage of our tissues and organs that has been accelerated. So um, we talked about a little bit earlier that the biological aging, so that's um, how old our organs are because of the things that's happened to them, may not always match the chronological age. So a 30-year-old may have organs that a 40-year-old may have, but and that's because ages contribute to the accelerated damage of tissues and organs. If I'm understanding you, it sounds like the ages that we make and or eat that accumulate start yeah. to make problems yeah. that then result in our bodies being able to handle the ages even less than they used to be able to handle it. And yeah. so, 
the accumulation accelerates. Correct. Assuming that the flow is consistent, the the accumulation would accelerate over time. And so it's sort of like an acceleration of the aging process. Yeah. I mean, is that that's something ex- like that's exactly what it is. I mean, um, yeah. and, and uh, I mean, increased ages is associated with virtually all the diseases associated with growing older. That's not a coincidence. I mean, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, you name it, erectile dysfunction. Ages are high in patients with erectile dysfunction, just as much as they are with somebody with cancer. So that sort of shows that there, there's a common theme to all this, and that's that increased levels of ages. And if our lifestyles are increasing our exposure to that, it common sense says it has to affect all that. There is an important distinction that I think we need to make for listeners as well, is that the endogenous formation of ages in the body, there's a defense to that. But when you eat exogenous ages in your food, they're already formed in the food. They don't have to go through the process in the body. And so when you eat them, the body cannot get rid of them very efficiently through excretion, through pain and pooping, to be frank. Um, And so they're immediately available for damage. And so there is no defense against that. And so, well... There's, there's limited defenses against that, which we'll talk about later as what can we do. But when you eat the ages and they're already formed, yeah. that's when most of the damage is going to occur. Huh. So if you've got proper kidney function, is that important for getting rid of the ages that uh, get through your digestion? Um, yeah, I mean, it is. But on the other hand, I've, I've actually got a kidney transplant patient because I had polycystic kidney. It's a genetic um, mutation. And huh. um, I've got to say, I had a lot of ages when I was a kid, but my levels are reasonably good. Huh. So, I mean, their clearance from the body is sort of one thing, but I think a, a lot of it has to do. And again, with this being wise athletes, that um, exercise, especially during the formative years, seems to be very, very efficient at reducing the damage that ages can do in later life and that's huh. that's sort of a, a major area of our research at the moment is sort of looking at that i mean it, it, that do, that's not to say that once you're older that you give it up because it's not going to make a difference because um it, reducing your ages even when you're older can still help you in a lot of different ways but one of the ways we're really interested in and we've got nine-year-old twins it's sort of the damage that they do when they're younger and how that can really manifest in the early onset of chronic diseases when they get older. I'm interested in understanding that a little bit further. But first, when you were saying that um, you can always do better by cutting back on the ages coming into your body, yeah. it sounds like smoking. It's like it's never too late to quit smoking. Yeah. It's always going to do you good mm-hmm. to stop. Yeah, yeah. So as I note, smoking increases age, virtually everything does. But uh, one of the questions we get the most is, uh, what about alcohol? Does it, in, does it actually increase ages? Big question we get quite often. And I usually yeah. start the conversation. The good news is that alcohol has no ages in it whatsoever. The bad news is the things in, in alcohol, when you drink them, can form ages in the body. So yeah. it, it can have an effect as well. But you're, you're right what you're saying. Yes, definitely. We've got studies in the lab that we've published, and um, they actually show that um, in breast cancer survivors, if you eat a lot of ages, it can really affect the therapy of the breast cancer um, treatment that you have. And uh, this has not made its way into human trials. Less. This is initial studies, but that has serious implications that if you're eating a high age diet while you're receiving, say, tamoxifen for breast cancer therapy, you could really be affecting how well that therapy is working. You might not stop it, but it will work a lot better when you're on low ages in the body than when you've got high ages in the body. Okay, so there's never a bad time to stop (laughs) smoking or to stop or to minimize the amount of ages that you're putting into your body, regardless of your health status. So that's good. Okay, so I'm kind of curious to understand how being physically active as a younger person helps you to not manifest chronic diseases as quickly when you're older. What do you think that is? Is it just you had, because you were active, you didn't accumulate, you got, you cleared more of the ages. And so you started with a cleaner slate after your youth. So if I can get a little technical, so my area of expertise is breast cancer. And so Uh one of the things that we study is normal development within the breast itself using different model systems, because during pu- when a woman undergoes puberty, her the ductal network that she uses to feed her baby, if she has one later in life, lays down this formation of ducts, right, where the milk passes through. And so 
one of the reasons that we study the breast is because it's one of the few organs that develops postnatally. And so it's very sensitive to environmental exposures and all these different things. And puberty is the time that it occurs. And so we've done studies and actually we just got this published um, this month. Um, <laughs> yay. Yay. The ductal network in mice develops similar to what a human does. And when we feed mice a high level of ages in their food, it causes disruption of normal developmental networks such that they can't feed their babies properly. They have pre-neoplastic lesions that develop into tumors later on. Um, and so what we found is that when we exercise the mice, it actually alleviates some of that effect of the ages. And so we think that during puberty or early life, when the body is developing into adulthood, there are a lot of other processes in the body that are being tightly regulated so that the body grows correctly. And so when we're eating a lot of ages during that time period, which is the time period where most people are not thinking about what they're doing in their bodies, um, although generationally they're a little bit more savvy about it now than when I was a kid, um, that's why all those little pieces of damage that are occurring are like laying down the foundation for a worse health outcome later in life. And so if you exercise, even though you're eating these ages and you're exercising, it's getting rid of more of them out of the body by a mechanism yet we have not yet understood, but we're studying it. Um, so you're not generating all of this kind of little pieces of damage that will later manifest into a chronic disease. So just to build on that a little bit more, I mean, the saving grace of ages is that the reaction, that long chain and the end products and everything is slow. So basically, when we, if our body has a lot of uh, these metabolites, the oxidative stress metabolites, the glucose and everything like that, it can, if you clear them from the body quicker, they don't have time to form ages. But if you're, if you're consuming a lot of foods that have a lot of ages, you're, you're consuming excessive amounts of sugar, fats, and proteins, that can sort of sit, I say, stagnant in the body. And these ages have the time to form, and they have the time to accumulate. Like we said, we don't know why exercise is good yet, but I really sort of my sort of take on all this is that it, because ages are slow and we clear all these sort of what we call precursors for age formation quickly from the body, that age or that rapid age accumulation I was talking about doesn't happen. So basically the ages will accumulate normally like we see every day in everybody, but that excessive accumulation from overeating from and everything can be sort of negated by exercise. And it seems from our experiments that that is very much the case when we're younger. And I think I'm a living example of that because the foods I used to eat were terrible and high in ages, but we've measured our age levels and mine's actually below the, the, the sort of norm, so to speak. So that's sort of, but I had a very active childhood working on farms and all sorts of things. And so I actually think that's one of the major ways we can fight these things. Well, that's interesting, and I, I guess uh, I'm uh, I'm sort of surprised to hear that the answer is we're not really sure why. When if you'd have told me why, I'd have believed you because, you know, I understand that exercise is anti-inflammatory. Yeah, that it is, uh, you know, helping your body to replenish its own antioxidant system, and yep. you know, and maybe part of it is related to what you were just describing hypothetically of the systems are upregulated and everything is moving faster and yep. clearing things out faster, and yeah, uh, and so stuff doesn't get to sit around and rot yeah and that's not actually <laughs> hypothetical i mean we know that these advanced glycation end products whether they're attached to a protein dna fats whatever they're attached to yeah. they actually function as um what we call ligand to cellular receptors that are on the outside of all the cells in our body and it's called the receptor for advanced glycation end products and this might get a bit technical but basically, RAGE, as we call it, the receptor for advanced glycation end products, is involved in immune response and oxidative stress and also metabolism. So when we throw ages into our bodies, we're getting um, sort of um, aberrant activation of RAGE, which upregulates um, metabolic dysfunction, inflammation, and oxidative stress in the body. That, uh. in turn, sort of... Um, releases all these sort of precursors I was talking about that leads to further age formation, which can go back and activate rage some more. So what exercise can do, it can actually interfere, interfere with that loop of age formation, oxidative mm. stress, age formation, all the way around. And what we're doing is we're sort of, with all the ages we're throwing into our body, we're activating that, that loop 
much more than it's ever been activated before. And we've got data to sort of support that, at least in our experiments. And we're working towards looking at that within in human trials and things as we speak. Okay. And so uh, if it's not too late, if you still are a kid, get out there and get some exercise on a regular basis. Okay. And if you have kids, then make sure your kids are doing that. If you did that when you were a kid, good for you. I did a lot of that when I was a kid. May, you know, maybe I don't have a lot of ages uh, in my system, despite the fact that I, I really tried to make up for that really as <laughs> hard as I could in my 30s, for sure. Anyway, where I wanted to get to was, this is one of those things where it's not just, there's not just one variable here. There's multiple things going on. Why are they bothering us now? We've been cooking meat since the dawn of time. Uh, so surely we've been eating ages for all time, right? So why is it hurting us now? Well, maybe we're eating more. We probably are eating more food than we used to. Perhaps we've uh, figured out how to make things be especially delicious these days. And some of that has to do with <laughs> adding ages. We love the taste of these ages. And, uh, and food manufacturers know that. Yep. That's how they have been successful. They make things that we love. Yeah. I mean, very quickly, one thing we haven't said from the start is ages taste fantastic. Yeah. I mean, they, they really do the charred areas, the caramelized areas on desserts, it, all of this, the grilled, that, that black area that we all love, a jam-packed full of advanced glycation end products. And you touched on it, that um, processed foods, when they're finished making them, don't taste them much. One of the ways that add that taste and also color into the food is by adding ages directly to yeah. that processed food. Isn't that weird? So you were asking about, so we're basically eating uh, overeating, which is leading to ages. So we've been cooking foods for the dawn of time, but they, again, coming back to the exercise, they were very uh, physically active, whether it was running away from saber-toothed tigers yeah. or whatever it might have been. But they were much more active than we are today. And also when um, we exercise less, which is leading to the accumulation of these ages, which is what I was saying. But the biggest sort of source of the extra ages in our lifestyle today is ultra processed foods. But all the processing, like um, retorting, um, extrusion, irradiation, are all processes used to make ultra processed foods. All of them processes increase the age content within that food. It actually makes that non-enzymatic glycoxidation, big long reaction, happen quicker within the food. And that leads to at least a tenfold increase in the age content before we even eat it. It's funny how, and I think that that's one of the things that makes this story hard to get people to listen to, is that the answer seems to be the same as all the things we already knew to do, to you know have a healthy lifestyle, yeah. eat your vegetables. Don't eat ultra processed foods, get some exercise, don't smoke, you know, all those things that my mom told me when I was a kid. Those all seem to be the same things which are good for avoiding uh, ages accumulation in your body. And hell, maybe that's why I'm pretty healthy. Thanks, mom. One of the important distinctions to make with respect to foods is when people think about an ultra processed food, yeah. they think of like a food that's really bad for them. And so people think in context of fat and sugar. And they think in context of salt and they think in context of calories, right? So yeah. you can grab like a frozen dinner out of the freezer, a lean cuisine meal that has low calories and you think you've been healthy. You're not thinking this is an ultra processed food. Breakfast cereals, you're like low calorie. I'm getting my fiber. Yeah. It's low in sugar. It, it you know, has calcium in it. It has vitamin D. This is good for me. It's an ultra processed food that has tons of ages. And so cereal bars. You know, you talk about your wise athletes. How many of yeah. them have taken protein shakes and taken power bars? And they're low in calorie and they're low in sugar or whatever it is that they are. But they're super processed and so they're high in ages. So people can think that they're eating healthy foods mm. that aren't fruits and vegetables, but they're super highly processed. So even though they're not mm. gaining weight and, they're, and you're so lean you're st and you're, you're, you're limiting your calories, your fat intake, and you're keeping your salt down, you're still putting ages in your body, but you're completely unaware of it. So that's one of the reasons that I think that people don't know about them and need to because... People don't talk about them from a, from a dietary standpoint. Yeah. And just to add to that, in our experiments, we see like a fourfold increase in tumor growth when um, animals are fed mm. a high age diet. And it's just, it's sort of, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's, and it comes down to that ultra processing of the foods is what we're sort of saying. And it's sort of, we don't really know all of what, 
it, what foods have ages, what don't, especially when it comes to the general public. So you can't really follow that, that advice. It, it's hard to get that information. And that's probably one of the reasons why we started the Age Foundation and nonprofit organization was truly try to make everybody age aware. Yeah. You're totally right that exercise, all the usual things actually contribute to ages. But where ages are a little bit different is that they're a consequence of sugar, fat, and protein consumption, uh, ultra processed foods, exercise affects them, and even where we live. And so it's more of a, a sort of ubiquitous marker of their effect of modern lifestyle on your health. Yeah. Most studies at the moment will look at a high-fat diet and tell you what happens. Nobody eats just a high-fat diet. We eat a lot of other things as well. And it's the combined effect of nutritional behavior that impacts our health. Yeah. Ages are different because they reflect nutritional behavior, not any single nutrient or not any sort of dietary pattern, but it's a combined effect on that. And because they accumulate in our tissues and organs, we can measure that and you can get an idea of what it is within your body and how many ages you have. And that's sort of reflected of all what you've done in your lifestyle when it comes to eating foods, especially. I didn't want to imply that there was not going to be anything new. Yeah, sure. But there are some things which I never heard before in all of the things that I had been told to do by my mom or by, you know, learning through pursuit of longevity or health span or even sports performance there are some things that I've learned going, looking into this ages, uh, you know, first by listening to your TED talk that I had never heard before. And so there is a simple answer here, even though this might sound really complicated to people, there is a simple answer and we're going to get to there, but we're not quite there yet. Before we move into the, what can we do about it? I really wanted people to understand better. Where does this show up? These ages that whether they form in our body and they attach to proteins in our body or they they're forming in the food and then they get absorbed in the body and then they stick to things you know if they don't get filtered out mm -hmm. where do they show up and I, I guess the answer is everywhere but tell me some specifics where does it show up and when i look in the mirror how can i tell that i got ages there wrinkles <laughs> wrinkles <laughs> yeah okay yeah i got a couple of wrinkles <laughs> Ages love long-lived proteins, and they attach to them. Obviously, I was saying it's a slow reaction, so it takes time. So the longer-lived proteins get more ages on them than anything else. And collagen is a long-lived protein, and ages contribute to the um, sort of wrinkle development in your skin over time because they bind to the collagen. It dries it out. It makes it difficult to replace. And although it takes years and years, they are a major contributor to the wrinkles in your skin. Now, if you can imagine the same thing happening to every organ in your body, that's that ages, yeah, do that. I mean, it's skin is an organ. I mean, and, and it does exactly the same to all the organs. It's been found in the beta amyloid plaques in yeah. Alzheimer's patients. We've shown that um, tumors are sky high in these ages. Cardiovascular disease, part of why you get plaque formation within the vessels of uh, within blood vessels is because ages cross-link and you get that plaque formation. Is and it also keeps the arteries from being able to be as flexible. Exactly, because they cross-link with different proteins mm. and collagen is part of that again. That makes the collagen very stiff, so it stiffens the arteries. And then, of course, the, the, the sort of archetypical age disease is diabetes. And H1AC is an age precursor. I mean, H1AC is almost an age product. It's one step away yeah. from being the end product. But, and that's been used to sort of diagnose diabetes for a long, yeah. long, long time. And, and because of the high sugar levels associated with diabetes, there's a, high, a lot of age formation, and that's why it's sort of the archetypical disease. But as I said before, they're associated with virtually every chronic disease, not just them. Is it also true that it's um, talking about uh, collagen and uh, cartilage, that it's it's uh, maybe at the heart of uh, some arthritis that people can have, a deterioration of cartilage and joints? Yeah, uh, and both uh, the de the deterioration of say it during osteoporosis and everything, because a lot of that is driven by the fact that they promote inflammation. So again, we come back to that loop with the oxidative stress, the inflammation, and you can keep that loop going. If that's happening within your joints, you're going to get arthritis, you're going to get inflammation. Okay. All right. So this is a big deal. I mean, it, whatever problem you're afraid of, 
this is contributing to it, uh, if not the, the driver of yes. it. And so what can we do? Um, this is, I think, where we have got to get to here. What can we do to stop it? I mean, if we, if we did everything right, then making them in our own body would be less of a problem, right? If we never got overweight, if we had not abused our body and accumulated yes. ages for 40 or 50 years, then we probably would be good enough at, at clearing the things that we made. But, you know, we are who we are and we're, we're where we got to. So yes. I now am not good. At, I am making more. And so what can I do to maybe help my body to maybe have better antioxidant status or better immune function or, and then also, gosh, how can I stop eating so many of these things? So, I mean, basically you're totally right before a lot of it we know. I mean, like you said, I mean, it's the bad foods, it's the high fat, it's the high sugar, it's the ultra process, which we already know are pretty bad. But then there's a lot, like um, Vic was mentioning earlier, there's a lot of foods that we don't know about. Tofu is highly processed, and the number of vegetarians eating that, that's probably their highest source of ages. Oh, no. Because you, when it's highly processed, and then you go and fry it or whatever you're going to do with it, that can actually exacerbate it. And so there is some foods that we don't know that's got there. The role of exercise is definitely a thing. I mean, it's sort of, it's hard to say how it's different there. I mean, the major thing that we can do is sort of be aware of what ages are. And that's what the foundation does is trying to make everybody age aware. You can't stop age accumulation. It's part of the aging process. One person last week told me that if, um, uh, ages may be God's sa um, failsafe, <laughs> and that if you never got a disease in your life, eventually ages are going to wear out your tissues and organs. If, if you lived a perfect life, you'll live a long one, but they're going to get you in the end. <laughs> so it's basically sort of understanding that and sort of putting it in your lifestyle. They taste fantastic. I still eat meals that are high in ages, but nowhere near how it used to be. But I can only do that because I'm aware of what where the ages are and what we can do to do them. Things like when we're cooking meats, we can do we can sort of use crock pots where it's really moist heat. Uh -huh. Moist heat um, really sort of reduces the ages that form because of that heat. Whereas you fry and you grill it, that really amplifies the age formation. So little simple things like the crock pots, cooking um, sort of meats um, that have been cut up into smaller pieces so they cook quicker is another way mm. that we can do. And th these are sort of basic things. And even... Um, and marinades, I heard. Yeah, that's what I was just coming to. So eight, the, the reaction, that non-enzymatic glycoxidation that leads to age formation is sort of inhibited by acidic conditions so if you marinate your your chicken with um, lemon juice or tomato ketchup or anything they're quite acidic Vinegar. so they can sort of reduce the formation of ages in the food wine yeah well, wine yeah that's acidic when you cook it it's not too good when you drink it neat but yeah but yeah it, it sort of can help when it comes to the food side of things one thing I was very excited to find out about was spices can also inhibit the age formation in the food when you cook it. So I love Indian food, as all yeah. English people do. And so um, spicy food tends to inhibit the reaction. And so um, if you're going to have a fried food, have a spicy fried food. And <laughs> it's oh, a little bit better. Interesting. Is it particular spices or just something that's hot? I don't know all the exact spices, but there was a paper that came out looking at in different types of Indian foods and they had the spice with those. But again, massively understood it area. You know, we're trying to do it all and study okay. it all, but we have to take kind of one thing at a time. Oh, sure, sure. One thing I'm particularly interested in is time restriction. People talk, call it intermittent fasting. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. they do one day on, one day off certain window so we look at a specific window of time yeah. and in the context of cancer because that's our area of study when we feed these mice i told you when we do our work on animals which you talked about earlier where we feed them the high age diet and we mess up development in the breast and we increase tumor growth if yeah. we restrict those animals to only eat for a small amount of time during the day we can reduce tumor growth okay so it doesn't help with the ages but it offsets the effect of the ages so it, it inhibits the the impact of ages on tumor growth. So it's so I am actually a time restricted eater myself. So main day both changed our lifestyle completely when we started working on ages. So we feed our dogs home cooked food because don't even get us started on dog food and kibble. And um, <laughs> I 
I make my own bread, I make my own meals, I try to cook in the slow cooker as much as possible, I try to limit how much ultra processed food we do. But the other thing that I do is I've been a time restricted eater now for almost two years. And so um, it all links in with metabolic health of your body, your circadian rhythm, your sleep patterns, your energy levels, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. And you guys are monitoring your ages through some sort of a skin something or another? Yeah, the, there's actually a device in Europe called an age reader. And um, what it measures is that there's a subgroup of ages because there's lots of different types of ages that actually fluoresce at a certain wavelength. Yeah. And this machine can measure that fluorescence in the skin and it can correlate it to uh, your age levels with your chronicolo chronological age. Oh. So I was talking before about your biological age of your organs may differ from the chronological age. This can actually tell you that um, you're, you're, although you're 30, you may have organs that are more like a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old. It can identify diabetic patients. It can identify smokers. Wow. And uh, it's been used in Europe for a long, long time. And there's actually a, there's a new sort of um, scaled-down version that's available on Amazon now that can do the same thing. This, oh. it, it, this hasn't been clinically validated or anything. But, uh, I mean, it's reasonable. And uh, you don't take it too seriously, but it can give you an idea of the age levels in your body. What's it called? Um, I, uh, what's it called? On um, it, I think that's the Age Reader as well. It's called oh, an okay. Age Reader, and it's on um, Amazon. I think it's about eighty dollars to to get it. We we got a couple of things. Oh, that doesn't so, sound bad. All right, well, I'll look for that, and um, and uh, if I can't find it, I'll reach out to you, and and maybe you can um, yeah, send me the there's name. There's sort of one last sort of point that I, I want to make here is that nobody's heard of advanced glycation end products. And they're in all the foods we eat. They're in everything that we do. There's no efforts to reduce ages in these foods. We're aware of what ages are, and we really try to eat healthy and avoid them. And it's difficult. And a lot of that is because it's just not sort of talked about within the food industry and everything. And I think yeah. by another thing we can do to sort of get this is like sort of get these things recognized. When they process foods, they can really do things within the processing rea reactions that can reduce the age levels in these processed foods. Oh, you're saying the food companies could do better if they tried? Yes, I mean, definitely. I mean, if they used a moist heat in one of their steps, for instance, instead of a high heat, that could reduce ages tenfold at that certain oh, no. step. And so there's a lot of sort of issues with that is we've really found it hard to eat healthily and avoid ages and be happy. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can really avoid it and be miserable for the rest of your life, but it, it, that's not really an option. You, everybody has to have a quality of life. And that's hard to achieve when it comes to diet and nutrition, when it comes to ages. Yeah. Well, okay, good. All right. So um, do you guys have some more time? I have actually a few more questions. Uh, yeah, go for it. Is it important to avoid high sugar foods? Again, it would come down to how much you exercise. It's always generally important to find to, to avoid high sugar foods. But what if the person is good? I mean, their their insulin, their pancreas works fine, and they deal with the glucose, and they have good, you know, HbA one C. Yeah, should they, should they worry about it? Yeah. So your sugar levels. I mean, nobody's actually really defined why sugar is really bad for you when it comes to biologically, mechanistically in diseases. Yeah. The, a lot of the studies have shown from epidemiology that all these people eat high sugars and they get a lot of cancer, they get a lot of diabetes. The mechanism behind that, the molecular biology, uh -huh. that's lacking. And it. And I am convinced that the formation of ages due to the high sugar is one of the reasons and is what happens in the body and leads to this age accumulation, accumulation in the organs. And okay. like I said, it, these accumulation is happening over time. You don't know it's happening until a disease comes. So yeah. just because you're having this high sugar, you're perfectly healthy, doesn't mean that you're perfectly healthy. It means you think you're perfectly healthy, but there may be something going on that you don't know about. Hopefully that's not the case, obviously, but yeah, yeah. how do you know that you're healthy? The other thing to think about is, and uh, people don't talk about food this way, but uh, there's an addiction component, right? And so Dave talks about this a lot with respect to high sugar. So you may be eating a lot of high sugar and working out like a crazy person when you're younger, but then you become addicted to the sugar. And as you get older, work takes over, you become 
you have married, you have kids, your body works yeah. differently. It doesn't start to work at peak performance anymore. And you're addicted to the sugar that you've always been eating your whole life. And now you start to gain weight. And then the problem just roller coasters into a manifestation yeah. of a bad situation. And so I think yeah. that, you know, we shouldn't ever give the message that eating a lot of sugar is a good thing. Moderation is always what you want to shoot for. I think what we try to do is, you know, can we educate people to have better dietary habits and better lifestyle choices so that you don't end up, you know, going down this rocky road of, well, I used to be able to handle this really well, mm -hmm. but now I can't work out on a treadmill six hours a day anymore when I'm throwing in all of my high sugar food, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is hydration important for clearing these things that are in our system? I mean, if we get dehydrated, is that, I mean, because that's getting, that's bad for the kidneys yeah. for one thing. And maybe that's, uh, yeah. uh, you know, upstream of not clearing the ages. Uh, but is there anything for, to add about hydration? That area of research is understudied, but you, what is there supports that like the, mo the more hydration we have, the, the, it can help sort of reduce that age accumulation. Okay. But like I said, we don't understand it very well just because the data isn't there. Okay, so the other side of eating a lot of, of uh, sugar might be, oh, well, I'm not going to eat any carbohydrates. I'm, I'm going to be keto. I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm yeah. not even going to eat much protein. I'm just yeah. going to uh, uh, eat fat bombs all day. Uh, <laughs> and I'm totally not going to have high blood sugar. Yeah. So does that mean I'm going to avoid uh, these ages? Um, not totally. There's evidence to, I mean, if you're like, um, what is it where you don't cook any, if you're eating raw food, then ages are going to accumulate slower than when you're eating the highly <laughs> cooked food. I mean, there's no doubt about that, but they all come with their own issues. Yeah. And a lot of these modern diets, yes, they, 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 uh, they seem to have beneficial effects, but a lot of these diets from 20 years ago had beneficial effects. And now we know they're bad for us because we're seeing the effects of them. The bad effects of a lot of these diets, we're not going to see for a decade, two decades, three decades, if they exist. I mean, they may be yeah. perfectly healthy. But basically, we all know we should be eating a balanced diet. So cutting out carbohydrates or cutting out any particular food group common sense sort of says that can't be a good thing it's eating that moderation and maybe not forever yeah maybe it, maybe as a, a way to yeah. lose some weight but then you eventually got to get back to eating you know kind of a balanced diet yeah i mean the biggest example is dog food and the kibble i mean a lot of these dogs are eating these ultra processed hot kibble foods every day and the number of diseases is popping up in them sort of our canine companions is going through the roof now their quality right. of life when they get older is bad okay these charts that you find online of, you know, how many ages are in this food and how many are in that mm. food, of course, that's yeah. tough because, you know, how did they make that food and, and that sort of thing? But also, what are they measuring? The, it, at one point, I was seeing CML was what they were looking at. And then, the, but then I heard that, oh, it was more the uh, methyl glyoxal, which is more important. And, you know, but what are these charts of how many ages in foods useful? I'm going to let you take that one, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it, it gets really compl complicated. Most dietary studies look at carboxymethyl lysine, which is CML. And CML is sort of an interesting age because it's sort of produced by metabolic dysfunction, oxidative stress, and the cooking of foods. It's like a ubiquitous age marker. When you look at um, the, the sort of oxidative associated ages, such as like the, the methylglyoxal derived age, they're really produced by oxidative stress. So they're very specific to that side of things and how that yeah. produces ages. So they're measured basically by um, sort of um, taking blood samples or, or looking yeah. at the age levels in the foods. They're measured in humans by taking blood samples. But in the foods, you process them foods, you grind them up, and then you can measure the levels of these ages using um, antibodies, as we use, chemical reagents. Yeah, and we can yeah. sort of make a color. And the color that comes, if it's darker, it has a lot of age. If it's lighter, you have less ages. You can use that to get an idea. But basically, yeah, they're very much estimates. I mean, okay. but the, the other side of that is the estimates are consistently high in the high fat, high sugar foods and those that are processed. So it's pretty much, okay. it's not doubted that they're there but and that they're high. It's just the exact amounts may be not accurate to say the least. 
Okay, but they're directionally right. Yeah. The, the ones that say they have the most ages in them, they probably do have the most ages in them, and those will be the things to eat the least of Correct. if you can manage that. All right, so that's good. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about, and this is probably the worst thing for you to talk about, but this would be like supplements. Because there's a few different things, right? I mean, you could block absorption of carbohydrates, right? Yeah. You know, block absorption of some of these sugars. You yep. could put proteins in the body that would attach to these ages so that they don't attach to proteins in the body that you want to keep, yeah. you know, in my collagen or, or whatever. And then maybe there would be things that you could put in that would uh, help with your glutathione status and yeah. if it was low or things like that. So anyway, it, the idea is what could you take to augment your diet to give you extra defenses, given that, you know, we're already we're past halfway. We've been abusing ourselves one way or another. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not all as good as you've been. Some of us maybe have, but others have not. And so what could we do? And so as an example, things that I've picked up online, one was to supplement with NAC and glycine. They give you two benefits. Those things will attach to ages and will clear ages that are that might otherwise attach to proteins in your body that you would rather hang on to and have be healthy. But also those things can help uh, your body regenerate your glutathione. Yeah. So those kinds of ideas, do you have any that um, you think are worth exploring, even if there's not solid science? I mean, in theory, um, a, a lot of supple anything that sort of reduces inflammation and reactive oxygen species in the body can really affect ages. The issue is that there's there's a myriad of ways that oxidative stress can form in the body and yeah. also the damage that it does. So if you're doing something like glutathione, which can reduce oxidative stress, it only reduces one particular aspect of oxidative stress. So basically, if you really want to attack oxidative stress and the damage that it does and what it does to your health, you have to uh -huh. sort of encompass a lot of different things that will sort of um, address all the different ways that oxidative stress can form and all the different ways that it can damage the body. And I'm not saying don't take them because anything that helps is good, but it doesn't mean that it's going to stop all of the ages from forming, even through the target that it's going for. Well, does that mean that maybe I should just eat a whole bunch of different vegetables and get a bunch of polyphenols and antioxidants? Yeah. I mean, reducing your age intake is the easiest one that would go in it. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be that. But like I said, people have got to live and you've got to enjoy life. So that's difficult. So a lot of this is, um, yeah, I mean, you can do that. There is, the research for ages is nowhere near what it should be. I mean, yeah. this just hasn't been funded. And we, we found it the first 10 years of our scientific career, once we swapped to ages, was difficult because we couldn't get funding. Nobody right. would take them seriously. And finally, at last now, we have a significant funding to start look at these things. And the, the effect of supplements and what they do can be fantastic, but most of them are shown in animal models or in the test tube. And when it comes to doing the human studies, it relies on sort of epi epidemiological data looking at large cohorts, yeah. and which aren't that reliable. They, they're only reliable when they're backed up by mechanistic studies within humans showing what the actual supplements do and how they do it. That's not available. That's just not there. <laughs> That's a fair answer, but I but that's not an answer that I'm looking for. I want your best guess. <laughs> Do you take anything? I drink a lot of green tea. I drink some coffee. I'm looking at my list here. I take berberine. Let's see. Uh, I take the uh, NAC, the NAC, and the, yeah, yeah. and the and glycine. Yeah. I mean, you, again, there's no studies at all that have actually assessed that combination of supplements and what it does individually. There is sort of evidence that they do good together. Who knows? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, the other side of this, you did talk about the attaching proteins that can soak up the ages. Yeah. There's a lot of evidence that shows that if you get too many, well, like, so ages that are preformed, they're sort of um, chopped up. When they get recognized by certain enzymes in the body. They get chopped up. That goes through the renal system. And when we visit the restroom, they're cleared. There's a lot of evidence showing that if you have too many of these things in the body, the accumulation of them small ages that are in the sort of um, kidney or in the liver can yeah. be reabsorbed into the circulation. 
And because they're now small molecular weight ages, they can really get into cells and do the damage a lot easier. So using that uh, peptide approach would probably do more damage than good. Huh. Okay, well, that's a scary thought. Basically, 10 years ago, we used to think there was something in broccoli that could cure cancer. Uh -huh. That's not true. And we know oh, that no. now, and it, it's almost laughable thinking back there now. So thinking that a, a single supplement or a small group of supplements is going to cure cancer or stop you from getting it is highly unlikely. It may delay it. It may have some benefit. We don't know that. But again, yeah. it, it sort of needs the, the research to definitively show, look, this is fantastic. But there's no certain things. Cancer is really, really, I'm talking about cancer because that's what I do. But cancer yeah. is very, very clever. We use really strong chemotherapy drugs to attack cancer. It finds a way around them. And they're huh. much more effective than any sort of supplement or anything from that point of view. Yeah. Supplements and things, if it's disease orientated, they'll find a way around it. So the best answer is don't eat them. Uh, don't eat ages is the easiest way. And I truly believe in the exercise from what I'm seeing. The, the data is not strong in the literature or hasn't been looked at much in the literature. But the experiments that we're doing at the moment really sort of hammers home how that exercise can really help. So don't eat them. Know where they are, what they are. If you have a high age meal, make sure you have a low age meal for a few days after. So these ages accumulate from the day you're born to your day you die. Your choices can decide how quickly that happens. And that really comes down to your food choices, your exercise choices, and basically what you do. But you can only do that if you know what ages are. And that's what our foundation was created to try and let people know what ages are so they can make them decisions. They may decide, I don't care. I'm not going to have anything to do with this. But if you don't know what they are and what they do, you can't make that decision. Okay. Okay. Well, this has been great. There's no silver bullet, but then if you had offered me a silver bullet, I wouldn't have believed you. So <laughs> that's good. Yeah, great point. Tell our audience how they can find uh, your organization and uh, you know ask questions or find more information about ages. Uh, well, the antiages.org is our um, website. We have um, a place there where you can go learn about ages. We're actually collaborating with food industry, clinicians, uh, lay people in the community, and also researchers. And we're trying to bring them all together to see how we can reduce ages in lifestyle. One thing we haven't mentioned, processed foods are going nowhere. The way global warming is going and the way that the planet is changing, we're going to be more reliant on processed foods more yeah. and more in the coming years. So we've got to sort of deal with these things and work and make them healthier. And that's one of the, the sort of goals of the foundation is to do that. At a societal level, we've got to deal with that. Now, for, for me, I'm not holding my breath for that. Yeah, yeah, sure. I totally agree as well. But also there's a place there where you can ask questions. I'm happy to answer them as quickly as I can but, uh, as we go. It depends how many questions we get. But um, I'll get through them all eventually. If anybody wants to ask for the things that are relevant to themselves or as it goes forward, happy to do so. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. And we had some questions from the audience. We'll, we'll get back together and deal with those. But for tonight, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Yep. Loved it. Thanks so much for having us. We appreciate it. It was great. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening in to our discussion with the founders of the Anti-Age Foundation. Do check the show notes for links to the information you need to learn more about how to slow your rate of aging.